This lecture is titled Hallucinating Protein Backbones and Sequences. Um, so compared to other types of methods that we've discussed so far, um, what do you notice here? So we've discussed maybe fixed backbone design, maybe flexible backbone design, and we talked about structure prediction, and now we're talking about hallucinating protein backbones and sequences. And so maybe we're interested in making some changes to the backbone as well as the sequence. And so let's talk about it. Uh, we talked about protein MPNN being a method for fixed backbone design. So whatever your backbone coordinates are, you want to keep, you just want to come up with new protein sequences that would potentially fold into the same exact structure. Okay, we did that. Um, we also discussed different types of representations for doing uh, machine learning in the protein space in general, but we talked about constructing a protein graph and maybe we want to learn on the coordinates or may maybe we want to predict atomic coordinates. Um, and so that dependent, on, that dependent on our application and what method we're interested in either building or using. We talked about protein structure prediction going from protein sequences to the 3D structure as close to the ground truth structure as possible, determined experimentally. Um, and so now we're going to talk about something uh, that's sort of in the middle of all of this. It's a combination, um, but also addressing an entirely different sub-problem uh, with hallucination. So to focus on some of the differences in terms of the structure. Uh, so in structure prediction, we're interested in these sequences being um, folded to represent the 3D protein shape. Uh, as close as possible. In hallucination, we're interested in making some changes to the sequence and the structure, but they should still be sort of mapped together. So your structure should still be, first of all, well folded for it to be considered successful, but also um, you should be designing sequences that are feasible. And so the goal of protein design with hallucination um, is to go from some random amino acid sequence to through some network, we're gonna talk about this, and then producing a blurry distance map. So what are distance maps? So maybe a matrix um, that shows distances between each atom, and maybe we do this for one atom type or all of them, and then we get some residue contact. So you go through some network, get a blurry distance map based on this random sequence, and then make some refinement and some optimization at the sequence level until this blurry distance map starts to sharpen a little bit to the point it looks like a real 3D structure. And so this scheme uh, is what we're gonna call hallucination. And specifically, we're gonna focus on um, alpha fold based hallucination. Uh, so this is work from Sergei Ovchinnikov and we discussed alpha fold two. Uh, to very briefly repeat, we have a query sequence that we're interested in figuring out the 3D structure for and we might want to have some database search to find MSA and then collect some templates that relate to this sequence in terms of similarity, uh, go through MSA module, initialize some coordinates, go through the structure module, try to come up with our best prediction and maybe do some recycles. And so the goal of AlphaFold is to go from sequence to the most accurate possible coordinates for the structure. But something else we can do with AlphaFold, uh, which is sort of repurposing it to hallucinate, is, well, we know that we need a sequence input and we can give template as input. And our outputs from AlphaFold include confidence. So what is one way we sort of predict confidence? What is something you've looked at that you remember yesterday from the AlphaFold session? Okay, so in terms of the local distance difference test, we can predict some confidence of that error. What else? PTM, and what is PTM for? Anybody remember what TM meant? Template modeling score? And so they refer to, uh, so PTM and PLDDT are confidence metrics for how close AlphaFold thinks it has gotten the structure 
um, if we were to look at the ground truth, okay? And then we do get some predictions, so this is our outfold prediction in terms of x, y, z. And then we get some contact maps, so this distance map or distogram. Uh, and then, of course, we get the sequence back out. So we can read the sequence back out. And one thing that uh, people had experimented with before AlphaFold 2 was out um, using a different model was, well, can we go from a random sequence and then try to predict the structure and then see how close it is to the target structure that we wanted um, and then figure out a loss based off of this histogram difference and then figure out, well, can the model improve on the sequence so that it's convinced this structure prediction uh, to be as close to this target as possible. Uh, and so this is sort of relevant. One of the relevant concepts here is backpropagation. So essentially you have to backpropagate some loss at the level of histograms such that you can inform the model and then improve upon this initially random sequence until it starts looking a lot like this target structure. And so you take a structure predictor so this model here could be AlphaFold, for example. Um, and normally, even though from AlphaFold you go, okay, here's a sequence, go into AlphaFold, here's a structure. Well, we're gonna go from a sequence to a structure like normal and then figure out what are the differences we dislike about this and then have some loss. In this case, it's going to be cross entropy um, and then make some changes or updates the sequence such that it gets very close to this target histogram. So this process is going to be alpha fold based hallucination, um, also called AF design. Uh, and that is for uh, today's demonstration. We're going to specifically look at collab design set of notebooks. And then from those we'll be demonstrating with alpha fold or AF design. Okay. So, uh, can we use AlphaFold to design functional proteins? So obviously we're going to place our AlphaFold model here and then try to get some new sequences and then try to get very close to a structure that makes sense, um, a structure that's well folded and has a sharp contact map. So sharpen that as much as possible going back to this. Um, so now this blue network is actually AlphaFold and we're doing this until we get to a sharp distance map giving us a nice 3D structure and a brand new amino acid sequence. And so it's the Nova design at the level of structure and sequence. So can we do this for functional proteins? Well, uh, I split this into four interesting design categories. So what might you be interested in doing this and using hallucination for? Uh, so the first one is designing protein sequences onto fixed backbones. So you already know what target structure uh, histogram looks like and you want to be as close to as, as possible. So you want the same sharp histogram. You don't want any changes to this. All you want is, well, find a new sequence that makes AlphaFold, uh, that makes histogram from AlphaFold look like this target. Okay, so that's case number one. Case number two is, well, you're interested in designing new backbone geometries. So make me new geometries for the backbone such that I can find new targets. So maybe you want to make new binder proteins or new scaffolds around binding sites. And to do this, you need new shapes. So change this protein shape, but do it in a way such that you're still sharpening this distance map, because that will be key to the structure looking more realistic. Um, and as we know, we have some confidence associated with it. So our structures should for example, be very high confidence still. So we want high quality structures while making some of these changes. Um, and then, so to put this into their individual categories and what we're going to experiment with, the first one, fixed backbone hallucination. Uh, so design sequence onto a fixed backbone. What is another method that does this? First bullet point, what's another method for a fixed backbone design? Protein MPNN, what else? Rosetta, okay. In fact, there are multiple Rosetta for protocols for fixed backbone design. Okay, and then free backbone hallucination. So designing a backbone with no constraint in the form of a target histogram, right? So do whatever you need to do to get me a confident structure 
Um, and in the meantime, make changes to the sequence, and then you should end up with a fully hallucinated backbone geometry and a fully hallucinated sequence. Okay, in the third category, well, maybe we're interested in designing a protein that binds a target. So what do you think the constraint is for this third bullet point? What might be an input? Structure of target? Okay, so maybe you need to provide, well, bind which target, right? That's the constraint that needs to be inputted so that you can hallucinate a binder instead of doing free hallucination. Okay, and then in this fourth category, what we call constraint hallucination, um, the idea is to have an input motif. So this motif is a region sort of borrowed from another existing protein. Maybe it's a zinc binding site, as always. Maybe it's a CDR loop. You've looked at some of those and then the idea is, okay, well, hallucinate the rest of the backbone, right? Does this sound like some sort of infilling idea? Maybe. And then um, for this, you are able to define a motif that isn't contiguous in space. So with a CDR loop, it's sort of going from residue number, um, let's say, give me the real, uh, maybe a CDR numbering. Where did your H3 loop start? Do you, does anybody remember the index? Okay, so let's say 98 to 106 was your CDR loop. That could be a motif, but let's say that you have a binding site that comes together in 3D shape, but isn't continuous in the primary structure. Well, you could have residue number 34, residue number 64, residue number 102, identify the motif that you're interested in keeping, and then take those disembodied residues making up your motif, and then make a scaffold protein around all of that. So we'll get to demonstrate all of these four cases. Um, we'll probably split into groups uh, so that it can be done in time. And we're ready to do a demonstration using Colab Design and specifically AF Design and Colab Design. All right, and that's the end of this lecture.